It's, uh, we got Heather. Hi. We have Dan. Heather, Dan, and Zach. It's the Zach Sang Show. <laughs> Jaher. Jaher. <laughs> you got it, you got it. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Did that work? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to New York. We're in the building, <laughs> 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 we Big welcome shoot. to the studio Cody Simpson and the Tide. All right. Yes. Hey. Hello. Look, look at you, looking really cool with the layers. Thanks, man. It's a good. <laughs> I mean, that jacket's intense. It's finally post summer, so I can wear this again. Right. Again. What have you been staring at it for the last like four months? Honestly, just yeah, waiting. I've been wearing, my, wearing just board shorts, just staring at my leather jacket. Like, when can I? <laughs> 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 when did you buy that jacket? Um, uh, probably a year or two ago. It's the only one I own. You know, just like I wear it. Like I feel like it's a car. It's probably expensive. Pardon? It's no, it wasn't. It was actually very cheap. Is that like a um a market? Ah. Yeah. So. But it's Dan is jealous. Oh, you gotta you gotta pick you gotta find the right jacket and wear it I in. Find, once you find the right, it's like a good pair of boots or something. Mm-hmm. Is that once you find the right one, you wear it your whole life. Yep. But yeah. I also feel like the right jacket. You don't find it. It finds you. Mm. Come yes. on, see? Mm. You heard? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I the, like, Zach I like sang, Zach. the Zach Sang <laughs> philosophy. That's it. Okay, in the studio, like I said, Cody Simpson and the Tide. Cody Simpson, uh, Big Sheesh. That's what I know you by <laughs> Big now. Big Sheesh, a.k.a. Reef Boy. We Reef Boy, building. Coral Reef. Yeah. And um, Adrian, right? I, yeah. I, I don't know your name because you showed up late. So, <laughs> um, wow. You can call me the late boy. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> the late boy. How right. are we doing? You, you got a, an EP we would consider wave one, right? Right, yeah. Uh, it, Four songs. Great body of work. Thank you. Tell me about how the three of you meet each other and Wave One comes to be. Um, I was I was running in slow motion along the beach and I just <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I feel like um, that probably has happened to you though. Uh. I mean, <laughs> um, no, we were we were um, Adrian and I met a couple of years ago uh, through mutual friends in LA here and um, we started playing music together and mm. Adrian's a drummer obviously and. Um, we started jamming and um, with a couple other musicians, and we went out and did some gigs. And Reef was actually in a, another band, um, hey. and we, <laughs> you know, both thought he was just so extremely skilled that we wanted to poach him from that group. You nice. stole him. Yeah. <laughs> what band did they steal you from? Uh, Air A E R. Cool. So Air. when you hear that, you know, Cody wants to take you and put you in his own band, you're like, all right, I'll do this. I mean. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait, can we curse? Is yeah, this- yeah, it's cool. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I like... Adrian, they're, you were in New York. Adrian went to New York after the Git tour and like, yeah. you guys, yeah. They're, they were kind of on their way out anyway. Like, they're broken up now. So Got it's it. Like, yeah. Okay. So they were, they, they were cool with it, you know. Okay, so, so you, you joined the group. Who's writing the songs here? Is uh, it We all write the songs. Together, yeah. the three yeah. of you. Where do the songs usually start? Um, it depends. Uh, I think um, sometime. Well, Adrian does production and uh, Reef, you know, and um, you know, I do the guitars and Reef yeah. does the bass, and um, you know, I, I'll bring in kind of like some lyrics or you know, um, melody or like a guitar riff, or um, Adrian, you know, might have a beat or something, and um, um, it can kind of come from sort of wherever. I feel like I feel like whenever we get together, one of us has an idea and can can develop from uh that point so do how long did it take to put together this ep uh we were recording the first one we were recording for a while like we had a, a lot of songs you know like yeah. plenty of songs you know just on like a folder and then we we just chose like the, the four we've been recording we, for like the last 12 months or so yeah whoa we've how been many recording s- for a year how many songs are just sitting on a computer somewhere like 50 or 40 something. Wow. So yeah. how do you pick the best four? Like usually people have put on album to put like 12, you know, 13. Yeah. Well, the 40, the 40, um, obviously weren't all extremely cohesive, you know, mm-hmm. it was a diverse range of music. Um, and, and, and because we'd been experimenting for a year or so, like we all started jamming together when I was living down in Venice. Uh-huh. Um, and at this house and and we would put on these like kind of weekly gigs and just like bring people in from the street invite friends over and stuff just because we remember, had like a drum kit there i remember you telling us about yeah. these things and and that's when we all kind of first started playing together like as a trio and we were doing blues and like you know covers and stuff cool. just for our friends and and then ended up kind of developing the sound slowly um over the last we, we definitely yeah. try a lot of genres for sure yeah, <laughs> you yeah know, we like, did we try some stuff that it was like what like, the 
different versions <laughs> of like, Sound like you know from from blues to rock to you know like reggae and stuff and it all just kind of blended together over time and you you do have a blend of all that on wave one obviously that title sets you up for numerous waves because there's never just one wave hopefully <laughs> wave not, a million coming soon <laughs> not on wood there's not just one wave it never uh, stops yeah. ramona that song stood out to me Obviously, like a very old school vibe there, because the song takes you on a journey, and it kind of it goes ups and downs. It's fast and then it's slow. It's it's really Elvis like, right? Right. Yeah. It definitely. Um, I I kind of consider that song like um like if Elvis like surfed. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, but it started out kind of as a joke, kind of a song, you know, because you know, lyrics are, you know, quite, uh, you know. Not not so serious, you know, yeah. not as serious or as poetic as as the other songs. So, um, kind of started out as a bit of fun, but it ended up being one of our favorites to play. Yeah, and it was actually tracked in like a few hours. We we actually we, that, we actually finished it like the, yeah. the final recorded version we used for the EP was us um, actually playing it playing down live. together once live. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. In the studio, yeah. And That's then I went and did my vocals afterwards to to what we played, but we did guitar, bass, drums at the same time. How many other songs on this EP were recorded that way? Um, that was the only one. That um, was the only one. We, we did all the rest in, in, in pieces. What is the biggest difference that you guys hear as creators between doing, <laughs> recording straight through top to bottom 100% live and actually like manufacturing every little piece and being able to control everything? I think the, the you mean like the difference? Like yeah, difference? to you. Like, I mean like um, it sounds different obviously. We basically, well we basically, a, a lot of our stuff is like a blend of live stuff with uh, post-production stuff. Yeah. So like we basically kind of play alive, you know. A lot of times, me and tr me and, tr and Riff Boy or Big Shish <laughs> uh, play, play together because we're you know we're like doing the pocket, you know. So like yeah. we we record together playing bass and drums, and then Cody tracks guitars right after, or or vice versa, you know. Like we uh, we always approach it the same way. Like we want to keep it like old school in a way. You yes. Know? And and. Uh, and even at some point, we want to do some tape recordings, you know, like we were talking about it, yeah. about like doing tape and bringing that back and then putting like crazy post-production. Analog yeah. recordings. Stuff. And Analog, you know, like, but it, but definitely we want to keep it alive, you know, like live yeah. music. You but know? there's a sound there, right? So when you record everything at one time for Ramona, you're achieving a different sound. It's, it's, oh, yeah. uh, it's raw and and spontaneous. And, and a lot of the other songs start out that way too. But um, we feel that sometimes they need, you know, contemporary yeah. Production behind it, you know, in 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 uh, in facets, not in not you know not entirely. We don't want it to be, you know, we want to keep that keep that element, you know, the the original essence of when we play it together just as a group, because otherwise mm -hmm. we can't translate it properly live. But songs like um, Ramona and I mean all of them, they kind of sound exactly the same live because that's the way we that we uh, yeah. develop them together and basically to kind of like answer your question to uh we record everything like the live instruments first and then post-production comes after Got so it. it, it's always the essence has to be there like of the live instruments so we kind of approach it the same as we would do either a blend of post-production with uh. with live or all live you know cool. it, it, it's always live the first thing who's ramona <laughs> she's a she's a, an imaginary woman, <laughs> but like written off of a real person, or but no, no, she's she's my thought. <laughs> she's your thought. <laughs> she's my thought. Yeah, shots to Ramona. <laughs> I've never said thought on this show. Really? Oh, yo, we're out here doing first. That's, yeah, <laughs> big first. Th th thank yeah. you for doing this. It's lit. Oh, What's the story behind? Tell me why. Tell me why. Uh, I actually. Um, I wrote that originally as a on on the guitar, um, acoustic guitar, and um, it kind of stemmed from a lot of the songs stem from poems that I wrote. Um, I write a lot of poetry and all of that, and so tell me why I kind of started out as a bit of a. Um, it feels good now as as a you know the vibe and the whole the whole um, sort of overall feel of the song is very positive and everything now, but it started out as quite an quite an angsty frustrated acoustic thing well, because it, lyrically it's you know it's it's quite a uh you know I'm, I'm i'm talking about a lot of things that i uh that run through my head but it is a little angsty you're not living but you don't die right right well there's a lot of lyrics in it that kind of seem like you're writing about when you were like signed to atlantic and you like were frustrated and there's a whole bunch of, like business stuff kind of hidden in the lyrics 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a bit of a shot at like structured society in general, mm -hmm. um, from the, from environmental destruction to um, taxes to, um, you know, political agendas and things. And you know, it, I kind of see it as hiding the med the medicine in the candy a little bit. You know, with mm -hmm. the the catchy tunes, but also being able to talk about real things that I think a lot of people just just don't care to mm -hmm. talk about whether it's because they 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 don't see it you know they're not they're not aware of it um and maybe that's you know partially uh some you know uh, uh, an artist's job to to bring these issues up mm -hmm. or um or what but um it that song meant a lot to me because it you know it touched on a lot of a lot of things that i believe in was it written about you when you say you're not living but you don't die is that you um i think it's all of us yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I'm not separating myself from, you know, from the people I'm speaking to. I think, you know, we're all in the same boat, you know what I mean? That, you know, whether we know it or not is, you know, slowly sinking. Oh. So it's like just trying to call out, you know, these issues that, you know, we all need to kind of pay attention to. Plastic in the water, you wouldn't want that for your daughter. So it is about yeah. everybody. It's also about it's talking about, it, about the future. It's about everyone. It's about, yeah, it's huh. about the future. It's about the past, you know how we got here and all that. Yeah, where were you when you wrote that song? How'd you get into that space? Um, I was just alone in my house. You know, I'd been <laughs> sitting there kind of thinking a bit and you know, I was watching documentaries and stuff and I was just getting quite frustrated and it just kind of poured out. I wrote it in about 30 minutes. Really? Yeah. So there's no, like, analyzation of yourself. It's just... just really... No, it's just observation. Got it. Yeah, yeah. One, one thing about Tell Me Why, I will say, Cody's barring up on that song. Oh, yeah. He's got bars. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a Cody for a... Lyricist. Yeah. Lyricist on, on point, like. The rap sing is pretty cool. Thank you. It's nice. Big I, I, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's some. It's it's weird because whenever we play that song, I almost like I get so caught in like the groove and the rhythmic cadence of it that I forget sometimes what I'm actually saying. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people. You know, it's easy to kind of just uh, you know undermine the lyrics and not really think about them because it, you know it's so groovy and rhythmic and stuff. But like, yeah, you're you're right. It's. it's Dropping bars. <laughs> <laughs> Did that rap sing evolve organically, or were you like, "This would be cool. Let me see if I can do this." Um, I like I like when people do it. Um, I took you know I, I gained a bit of that from like different uh, you know artists like Jack Johnson and stuff that I grew up listening to that yeah. like kind of have a very rhythmic cadence to a lot of their music. So, well, do you feel like you got enough credit for free? Because you mentioned Jack Johnson. I went back and listened to that album. I was like, it has a very Jack Johnson, G Love. Yeah, I guess maybe. Sublime dispatch yeah. in a way, but yeah, that is well, quite I had a range. I had G Love and and Donovan Frankenrider both on that. Um, but we take a lot. I take a lot from from people like Sublime and um, like the Police now for you know this stuff. And um, I, was, I was just talking to G Love on the way here. Really? <laughs> that awesome. Yeah. Um, and and these are these are artists that you know we've been able to you know very very I've been lucky enough to interact with and all that too. And um, and free free for me was. Uh, you know, kind of a, I feel like a transitional thing. I, I like that album very much. You know, it was a kind of a stepping stone mm -hmm. towards towards what we're doing here. So well, it was like we were talking about that before. Like that yeah. that album set this up, and that was the first time you were ever making music, just you and a guitar, really. Right. Yeah. Were yeah. you guys all friends when that came out, or did you guys like have to go back and listen to what he's done before to be like, okay, this is who he is now? For what? For no, free? we actually hadn't met. Yeah, what? free. When before, free came out, I met you when when I was you were doing it, yeah. recording the last song or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then you guys then met and then yeah. we met when that yeah. album came out. We all kind of got together after that had came and gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the tide. Great song. Thank you. Really, I mean, would you? I would say that that's kind of the title track on the record, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, what is the tide? As it's a, not the real tide. As a group. I mean, the, the, you're talking about the tide in the song. You're waiting for something. What are you waiting for? Or are you um, actually just sitting on the beach waiting for the tide? If if you, I mean, it's I think it's open it's interpretation. To, it's open to interpretation. I think um, if you give if you give the lyrics, you know, if if I say what they kind of mean to me, if I give them too much meaning, I feel like they kind of lose their meaning to other people. You know, take takes away the the open interpretation aspect of of, I think why we listen to music and all that. But um, in general, it was kind of uh, it started out as a poem about sea level rise. Again, it was another environmental kind of a thing. And the lyrics really start with you? Or are you coming to them with like a shell of a song? How much is done in these records before it touches these two? Popular today. Sorry. That's my mom FaceTiming me. Hi, Hi. mom. She's in Australia. <laughs> She's so nice. Shout out to Andrew. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it. Yeah, do it. She knows. She was just here. Hello, mom. 
I'm doing an inter- I'm doing an interview at the moment. <laughs> you were just here, Ali. Oh, hey, Ali. Hi. Oh, he's a Dutch. Hey. I'll call you later. I love you both. <laughs> Aww. I cut her. <laughs> she's saying I love you. I her. <laughs> she calls me and she's like, I'm like, what do you want? She's like, I just want to tell you I love you. Aww. She's the best. You guys have been doing this as a unit for a while. Like, I've known you for a long we're time. A, we uh, have that bond. We're a family unit. Yeah. It's really special. I mean, We all moved here together, so. You embarked on a journey like, what, seven and a half, eight years ago? Longer? Almost, yeah. Seven, six, seven years ago. It's crazy. Mm. Do, you, do you think about your life because you're still so freaking young? It scares me sometimes to think about how young I still am, but how, how much I've experienced. You've experienced a lot, but like, do you ever have the fear that you gotta keep it going, right? Because you're not around to make music for the next, like, even 20 years, you know? You could be making music for the next 50, yeah. 60. I, I don't have any fear about it. I, I don't have any, um, it doesn't, it doesn't make me, uh, no, it, it doesn't, I don't feel pressured, you know, by any means, and that's, that's I kind of took a, um, took a bit of a, a year off like the while we were recording and before that and I kind of you know I went through a bit of that kind of teenage rebellious stage where I just kind of like you know stuck my middle finger up at anyone that told me what to do and all that yeah. and now I've kind of like come you know and we all go through those things mm-hmm. and I've yeah. come out of it the other side being you know very ready to you know being very sure of myself and ready to um, embark on kind of a new thing and you know I, I envision that happening to me probably another you know, 10 times. I don't know. You know what I mean? But you got to be okay with that. I'm, I'm very okay with it. You know what I mean? Right. I'd like to do this for my entire life and I don't know what that means, but you know, just try and, uh, you know, stick around for it. Yeah. It goes in ebbs and flows. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm course. sure there's a lot of people though that still, when they hear Cody Simpson, they think of you back in the day, like this young blonde, you know, pop star. Yeah. Have you found it? It's hard to get people to like, like see you for who you are now. Um, not really, and I don't mind people with, you know, that have, I think um, we all kind of hold preconceived notions about everyone, like mm-hmm. we all, we're all quick to judge and we're all, you know, we're all quick to make um, make assumptions and, and often those assumptions aren't bad, they're just, you know, they're just not exact, you know what I mean, that's, yeah. and that's okay with me, that's fine, you know what I mean, it takes time to, to, to um, you know, often find that if you change a little bit, it'll take people a year then to kind of catch up and then you know i'll be somewhere else by that point and mm-hmm. it's just kind of like it just takes time and we all we all grow and change every day so yeah i'm not i'm not um i know i'm not frustrated with you know what people may think about us or me or take time that mm-hmm. last answer was deep this ep is deep i mean <laughs> it, it's it's there's layers to it emotionally and socially and like yeah. personally Wh- what happened in your life that kind of like not woke you up, but was like, kind of fueled this like want to not only like understand the world around you, but understand yourself better. Like, did you lose sight of things? Um, what do you mean, lost sight of things? I mean, like, I'm thinking about like even these songs, right? Yeah. Tell me why or that last answer, like the understanding that people change, like that's a deep, th- th- that's a right. that's a deeper concept, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I. <laughs> We we grow and we we gain knowledge and you know we I don't know I, I don't know how to, how to explain it. Is there one moment throughout this musical journey that like you know that you learned one like really piece of valuable knowledge that s- sticks with you today and you know will stick with you moving on? Um, on attachment to That's... outcomes. Yeah. Is it's this a good the, one? Is this the music that you always had envisioned? Like, did you envision having like a band or like? Is, yeah. this, is this what you like even back when you were recording pop stuff this is what you've always had envisioned for yourself um it kind of developed over time i mean i, I always try to think ahead and um I, I i definitely for a while now have wanted to play you know in a band and as a trio and you know with you know guys exactly like reef and adrian here um sure. you know playing <laughs> blues and playing uh this type of music and um i'm so glad that it's kind of Manifested the, the way it has. You can, that's beautiful. Aww, These guys, guys are the best, you know. You and, guys. And we've been recording every day, and we just we just having the best time, and you know we're all we're all just still babies, so it, you mm. know it doesn't really worry me that much. It's but, just fun. That's good. Do you, do you, do you remember the day you're just like you know f this pop stuff. This is not me. I'm out of here. Like I'm doing what I want to do. Um, 
there was a day there, but um, I think you come back around to it. I mean, pop pop music's great, you know. I I love all the stuff I made growing up. I, brought me to where I am today and mm-hmm. you know I think I think what we make now is still pop, you know pop I was just gonna say um, yeah. you know I don't think it's I don't think it's that much uh, you know it's obviously got got layers to it and we you know we play you know the the, the concert experience mm-hmm. that we play is a, quite a rock and roll experience um, which is obviously different to um, you know the uh, uh, majority of my teenage years and all that but I always play guitar and I don't think it's that that far out I think it's um, just a natural evolution I love pop music, and we make, you know, we make pop music. We have a lot of a lot of music that we're, you know, ready to release. That's you know quite a banger. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. popular <laughs> sounding is, as well as the the blues Smashes. and the jams that we do live and all that. So, but there's n- I will yeah. say it forever. There's no formula. I mean, there is a formula, I guess, if you want to really break down what is on top forty radio. But pop music needs to be what's popular. So yeah, there's not a certain sound that's going to be more popular than the other. Right. Yeah. You I know, mean, there, there were times that jazz was pop. There mm-hmm. were times that blues were pop. Those times that you know everything's been pop at one. Word. You know, rap trap music is pop now. You know, and and I think True. it's just like um, you know, we got to kind of make what you, what you want to make, and you know, whether it's deemed pop or not, it's just kind of the public's. Uh, what the public um, is able to determine. That's it. And pop music can sound like literally anything. Mm. And a radio station, a good pop station, should sound like different things. There shouldn't be one ginormous, like, one sound that the whole station follows. Right. So, do you care about competition? Um, Because that's just the truth. Like, you gotta gotta compete to get on the radio, and you gotta get on the radio to have hits. We're all competitive. I grew up, I grew up, um, Swimmer? As a swimmer and an athlete, so I've, I've, I've still, we're all competitive. Yeah? We're the best band Allegedly, I'm not saying this. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, we're the best band in all of rock pop. Wow. So you heard. Come at us, Joy. Well, who would you guys consider? Wow. Like, if you don't have comp, like, who would you consider as competition? Oof. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no oh, one's man. no one's in our competition. We're well, in a lane of our own. Nice. We're, Good answer. I'll let, let Reef say these things. Yeah. Allegedly, yeah. It's, well, it's not for me. I feel like you're dancing around an answer over there. Uh, sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> sheesh. That's, that's a big sheesh. But I'm picking up on some cues here, right? Like uh-huh. we're talking about the rap sing. You bring up Jack Johnson and the Cadence. I would say Ed Sheeran. He's pretty much a rap singer. Kind of. Not always. But like his mm. last album had a lot of moments of that. Right. Ed might be considered competition. Um, I mean, you have guys like Ty Dolla Sign. They're kind of doing that type of stuff, too. Oh, mm. man. We love Ty Dolla Sign. Cool, yeah. Well, He's Ty Dolla Sign can maybe do a record with you. Cool. Sean Mendes would be a different story. We talked about we talked about wanting to um, do something with Ty Dolla Sign, actually, like two days ago or something. Yeah. Um, Look at but that. Sean, but Sean, <laughs> Sean, these are all guys that... um. That I've spoken to about the the music actually and sent sent to and Sean really likes the the um the yeah. Wave One the EP one. so cool yeah. yeah what's your relationship with Miley these days um it's still I haven't seen <laughs> 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 I haven't seen I haven't seen her I haven't seen her in a few months but actually she um she actually got me um hooked up with my my latest management when I left I my my prior prior management I I um kind of told her what I was planning to do and she actually took me over to to Maverick. Um, and I kind of, you know, gave him my vision and stuff, and um, she ended up helping me cool. get my new situation sorted with the guys and everything. And um, she, she really likes the music, and um, I spoke to her yesterday. Actually, we were in the studio. So you guys were in the studio together? No, no, no I spoke oh. to her yesterday. So we, I still keep in touch. She's been, a, she's been a wonderful, a great, you know, fan and, and support for us. And I. I I think the absolute world of her. So there could be another record there too, you know. Well, yeah, I was gonna you say. Know, yeah. I don't yeah. like. I'm not saying you have the same sound, but I feel like your music has gone in similar directions. So I was wondering, like, if, if you guys worked with a person like Miley, does that? I don't know. What I'm trying to ask, like, does that help or does that kind of bring you back into? No, I think it helps. You know I mean, what I mean? I th- she she's in my eyes, and I think probably in all of our eyes, I, she's. I I I, hide, I hold her to very high artistic standards as a as a um musician and as a person anyway so amazing yeah miley cyrus she's great <laughs> she but, uh, really is a good egg yeah what about cruz beckham we teaching him how to play guitar i i went over to their house the other day um and i got there and he he knew all the riffs to all four songs off of so cool um Way off the the four songs that we released. That's Absolutely. awesome. Yeah, I go over and he's like, dude. I, every time I get in the car, I'm listening to these these songs, and I was like, oh, do you want to learn them? And he's like, oh, I know all of them. 
<laughs> wow. Like, well, what am I? What do I have to teach you? I <laughs> yeah. do guitar lesson. I can't I can't teach you anything. You know all the songs we wrote. So, what are you? Are, are you friends with him? Um, I'm good mates with Brooklyn because he's around my age. Yeah. we're all good mates with him, and um, and so uh, Cruz has been is been a good fan, and we, you know, I went over there the other day and because he asked me to teach him some guitar, so we jammed for a bit. Yes. Cool. So, do the Beckhams pay you to be his teacher? Pardon? Do they pay no, you to be his teacher? No. No. Um, David actually pays me in Scotch whiskey. There you go. That's a deal. Yeah. That's sure, not I'm, bad. I'm sure he's got great whiskey. He has his own his own whiskey, so he get, every time I go over oh, there, he no, gives no, me no, a no. He gives you his own His brand? own one, yeah. That's yeah, he signed it for me too. There you go. David yes. Beckham 23 was, every, was so cool. Every time you go over, you come home with a <laughs> yeah, so, What, are you going to save them until you pass on and then you can sell them for whatever they're worth? No, I'll keep them. I'll keep them. <laughs> Forever. Especially, yeah, he's the man. Dude, they ran, yeah, right? they ran out cool. of candy the other day uh, for Halloween. Is that right? Yeah, I, I kind of wanted him to just hand out underwear. You right. know? <laughs> Instead. Or scotch. Or scotch. Or scotch. Yeah. Or scotch. <laughs> uh, underwear would be a little bit safer. No, go yeah, for the no. underwear, stay for the scotch. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool that Cruz Beckham wants you to... Go over to the Beckham's house, you got to show your ID, you get a bottle of... Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm with it, let's get it. Do we have a... Is there a musical future in Cruz, you think? Um, he Well, he's he's very young. He's... um, I, can't, I don't know exactly how old he is, 12 or 13. 13. Um, but... Uh, right around the time I, I, Cody I've, I've Simpson been, started. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I saw... I, like I, he's already much better at guitar than I was at that age, but I... You know, I, I enjoy giving him lessons because I see myself in him. Anyway, not not it's not a cocky thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying no. to be, you know, I'm just it's like it's nice, you know, because because I I'm I imagine he he's going to grow up to have a successful career. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's cool. And okay, you doing that for Cruz? I remember the last time you came by the show. I think you saw John Mayer at a restaurant or something, right? Yeah. And you just went up to him. Yeah. Didn't I went you up like to you him. got his email. Oh yeah, I went. I got his email and um, I ended up sending him some songs yeah. that I'd written, and he gave me a bunch of advice, and it was cool. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't, you know, I don't mind going up to people. I think we saw him again the other day. We saw day. him again um, at a concert, at a jazz concert. Dude, yeah, he played. Did you, you go up Well, and say I'd hi? actually, I'd gone. Um, we, well, then again, we, you know, we, I was at dinner with a mate, and I saw him again. He just pops up, and I went over to him, and I'd like, <laughs> and he asked me about what guitar pedals I was using, and like, um, I can't disclose this, but I'd had like a couple of drinks, and I couldn't remember, um, <laughs> and uh, and I was just, oh, the, it was a blue, there was a blue one with like a grenade on it, and he's like, oh, this, you know, this one, and I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just kept asking me these he's things, a like as a too. guitarist, you know. And he knows and his gear. To, yeah, he knows like, his gear, and I'm, well. I'm not so savvy with that. So it was like I was like, quite embarrassed. But he's he's a very <laughs> he's a good he's a very lovely lovely guy. Dude, you're in West Hollywood now. You know, you are in the city. I know it's crazy. You see everyone see everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, do we send John Mayer wave one? Did we send him? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we sent him it. Like two weeks ago. I haven't heard back yet, so we'll see. <laughs> Just waiting. John, check it, it out, will. mate. Please. Come on, John. Love. Do you ever uh, miss seeing yourself in these pop teen J14 magazines? What a question. Well, um, I feel like, you know, you may get so much attention and you may, like, get used to it, and now that it's not like that anymore, I don't yeah, know if you could miss You may miss it. Nobody reads magazines. Yeah, I don't the know. Websites, there's, there's, tabloids. It comes, like, it's other, there's other ways I've, you know, obviously I'm in different things now. It's not, you know kind of past that thing but my mom still has a collection of them so <laughs> nice oh, it's and will forever and will forever cool. they were like a thing i mean like when you first started uh, there was like seven of them there were so many of so those ma- yeah magazines. i think i sort of came up at a time where they were you know before like social media was yeah. really you know integrated into our lives it was like still people still bought figuring it out the magazines and the Dude, J14, Love. Twist, M Magazine, Ocean Pop Star. Up. Ocean Up was, the, yeah, that was one of my favorite sites Ocean back up. in the day. Ocean Up. Good old Ocean Up. What's your live show like? Because you guys have the four songs out, but I'm assuming you play more at your show, right? We play a couple covers. Okay, what are you yeah. guys playing? Santeria. Oh, oh nice. nice. Okay, then the whole sublime thing works. The police, the police. Message in a bottle. Message in a bottle. Nice. And we play some blueses. We play cool. Hound Dog by Elvis. Oh, yeah. I've watched Fine. you do that. 
It's pretty sick. Which is fun. We do. It's we a do, smash. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna it's be a hit. Mess. It goes. Well, yeah. it, it hits on like on stage. I have this song, boys. I wrote this song called Hound Dog. I think it's gonna be big. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also play like a couple of Cody's uh, old tunes. That's yeah. what I was gonna ask. Pretty brown eyes. Yeah, pretty brown eyes. Pretty brown eyes. Acoustic. Oh, pretty to brown eyes. That he did with Home Bieber. Tomorrow, the one we did with Justin. Go to sleep. <laughs> Wake <laughs> up. <laughs> um, you know, cool. I still have pretty brown eyes on a playlist, and it comes on all the time. I love that song. I love that. I love that song too. Sick. Where are we at with I I I? Is Pardon? that gonna just die? We don't play that one. Gonna die I I. Big shoes, big shoes. How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> no, you yeah, mentioned Mars. the song with you and Justin. Weren't you guys yeah. working on a project together at one point? At one point, yeah. Whatever yeah, happened to that? On, we ended up putting on the back burner. Um, not for any particular reason. Just um, you know, we put the one out, and you know, we we decided to do other things at that moment. So mm. we haven't come back around to it yet. But Seems like people like that one. It's a good, I, I love that song. It's a great song. Yeah. And, and that was like another weird full circle moment there in your life because when you first started, everybody and their mother compared you to Justin Bieber. I know. I don't yeah. think there was like an interview you would it's do. Australian that, Justin Bieber. That's exactly <laughs> um, it. Which is a great thing too. You know, it's like these things aren't negative. Shouldn't be negatively received. I mean, like at the time, I was like, yeah, stop. Yeah, you know, stop comparing me to. Him. Yeah. But like, he's unreal. Like, he's so good. So. Yeah, you guys, amazing. you guys still talk. Um, not, not all the time, occasionally, yeah. Uh, you know what, the last time he was here was right when that <laughs> thing came out of you, Niall, and Justin, there was like, a little like bowl or something <laughs> on the table. Marijuana. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the last time. People you were blew here. that way out of proportion. I woke up the next day and like I don't know. I don't like. I don't think any of us were smoking it or anything. It was just having a party there, so it was yeah. just like around, you know, and all that. It was at my house and. I woke up the next day to just like 12 texts from both of them being like, who put that up all this stuff? I was like, boys, it's fine, don't stress. Um, <laughs> That's such a stoner thing to say. Like. <laughs> Shut up. It's, just, it's, it's calm down. down. It's, it's fine. Just like, look yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, relax. <laughs> um, it, it cooled off, obviously, but yeah. Was that was the last time he was in here? Yeah, last time you he heard yes. was right as that was happening. When people say it was, it was like a crack pipe or something like that. Yeah. No, I don't what? Know. what? It was, it was an orange bowl. Yeah. No, I don't like, like figure that out or, or something. Like you guys figure it out. Or it's like, oh yeah, it's clear. It's like nothing. Or nothing. yeah, we got to like taken down. So I don't. Yeah. Know. yeah, it's gone now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this was a great conversation. Well, I also got to ask. Uh, okay. what do you think about Logan Paul name dropping you in his new song? Did Wait, you hear that? What? Wait, he did that. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Why? He has a song called "Out of My Hair," and he said like, "Candles are lit, lights are down, playing Cody Simpson," and then it flashes to like a little screenshot of a uh, "I Love Girls." Yeah, it was like a comedic thing you put it in um i saw that yeah, yeah. but what yeah. was he saying shout out, shout out. No, it I was just like a commit it was like i'm um, or oh, uh, um yeah, it was it was the like, girl lights down candles on playing cody or something and then there's a shot of like oh, him yeah. and bella thorne rolling around a bed together yeah it was a lot to watch well <laughs> who, tell, who tells you that that exists Pardon? who told you i that saw it on my um feed? i was like tagged in it a few times on my thing i mean I didn't know uh, I didn't know much of him before that, but yeah, I mean, he's quite a force. A force, yeah. I didn't, I couldn't tell if it was like serious or not, or what, what the whole I don't think he vibe knows. is there. Yeah, but then, serious so. or but then not. do you see like okay. that song has like millions and millions of views? You're like, what is this? It's, it's a positive. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Vine. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're out here. <laughs> Just <laughs> old yeah. press, good press. Wait, what, what's the name of that song that it's on? It's called Out of My Hair. Out of my hair, Cody Simpson and the Tide is lit. <laughs> <laughs> Big sheesh. We'll cover, we'll cover it. Yeah. How about that? That's it. There you go. See, that's a good idea. A rock and roll version of it. Yeah. Blues, blues, hound dog type version. Out of, of my hair. Out of my hair. I like it. <laughs> Maybe he appears for like an appearance. You shoot the video. Great. You know? <laughs> We're just giving your manager a ton of ideas. <laughs> you have so much work to do. Shaking his head. Shouts to MZ in the bag. Yeah. Let's yeah. get this done. Down. Mad yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's freaking out right the now. Best, the best manager in the world yeah, like when's the last time he shoes. got called out in, a, in an interview he's I don't know, we, we call him out all the time that's good yeah he's, he's, he's just not talking <laughs> look at him he's just like <laughs> he's the fourth member head. he's the fourth yeah, he's the fourth actually, member of the tide yeah so what do you guys think of cody being shirtless on the front of your ep cover did you guys want to be a part of that oh dude i i, I when whenever matt was like oh i think this is gonna be the cover so like me and Reef, i was like oh that's popping like, really? Like, that's popping. Yeah, of course. I don't mind not, not like, being on a picture. It's, like it's too tight. As long as the music is there for me, I'm, like, I'm very happy, so. Okay, yeah, I noticed Big Sheesh has the, 
Is that is that on your shirt, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the he merch, wears my what? face on his shirt. The merch just shirt ended. Uh, but shouts to represent at represent on Twitter slash Instagram. <laughs> you feel me? Hold, hold it, hold it down for the merch. Uh, hold it down. We're we're coming out. Can we can we? We have no bad result. More, okay, co- more yeah, colors. We got, we got more stuff coming. <laughs> just You just got to stay tuned at Cody and the Tide on Instagram, right? Wow. At Cody and the Tide on Twitter. Cody Simpson and the Tide on Facebook. Yo, we're out here. Wow. Dude, Spotify. You up, you're going to be selling your paws like every day. Yeah. Big sheesh. On Instagram. <laughs> 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 yeah. You're just going to be doing you, fit tea. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. It's going to be a pitch man for doing everything. Like, like um, <laughs> Teeth whitening. <laughs> Yo, He's gonna be doing at, the hair gummies. In the tide. <laughs> yeah. you know. hair, hair gummies. Hair vitamin. Uh, if you need vitamin. a pitch man, a sales guy. I'm I'm that dude. You feel me? Like look at that hair. Look at that smile. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> all about the money. All about the money. Right? Big sheesh. That's wow. all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Okay, we've covered a lot here. We've gotten to know <laughs> Big Sheesh. We know that Adrian is late. Um, <laughs> we know that Cody is awesome, and you've been doing this a while. And, we, and we've covered really Wave it's a One. Pleasure to be back and talk to you guys. Thank you. Well, come on well, by whenever. Well, when can we expect Wave Two? Yes. Uh, sure. We're looking at first uh, our first quarter of next year. Um, nice. Hopefully, early early next year, as early as we can. We're, we're working on it, as you know. Yesterday, today, it's something tomorrow. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's something yeah. unreal. Seriously, like, yeah, it's great. Boys are doing an unreal job, so we're very happy. It's something it. amazing. Yeah, uh, it's, I, I never say this like about stuff. He like, says it every day. Because your feelings <laughs> and opinions are so not biased. <laughs> yeah, we might Man, be. We just, might be the cockiest band. <laughs> honestly, Man, it's just uh, amazing. It's, uh, it's it's such a it's oh, it's such a treasure. Honestly, it's. it's and it's not because it's it's my band or I'm I'm like producing or anything. It's just I, I just love the songs. Like everything about it is just insane. Do you feel like you need to be a little cocky to succeed? A little bit, yeah, because definitely you gotta, confident. You I leave it to the, I leave confident. it to him. I leave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you're a man and your hype man. Yeah. Yeah. And know what the f- you're doing. Like, if yeah. you know your f- you can be cocky sometimes. You know, if you don't yeah. know your f- then why would you be yeah. cocky if you if you don't know? Here's, like, here's the trick. You got to be like, it's okay to be confident, but you got to be able to back it up. That's so it. like All three Definitely. of us, we have the skills to back up like any talk. So it, like it comes off as facts, you know, it's not just like... Like McGregor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, nah, I don't mean, say all of that, but you know... Like, Mayweather. Mayweather. Uh, yeah, like he, he can talk that talk, but you know, when he steps in the ring, Mayweather, not McGregor. I'm a, yeah. I'm a McGregor fan, so well, I know you're Mayweather. What are you? Uh, I um, I wanted McGregor to win. Yeah, me too. So bad. I, I, yeah, I just always root for the underdog. Yeah, me too. So, me, me yeah, too, me you too. too. I just don't care. <laughs> what about Dodgers and Astros? Dodgers. Uh, Astros. Yes. Come on. <laughs> I said I like the okay, underdog. We'll, we'll find out tonight. <laughs> we will. Yeah. We sure will. <laughs> we gotta wrap this up. Okay. Cody Simpson and the Tide. <laughs> Uh, thank you, mate. We, we, thank you for it's coming great to by. Come and chat with you. Thank you. Wave yeah. One is the EP. Do yourself a favor and listen to it. It really is we great. Appreciate man. that very much. Mm-hmm. It's very different, and uh, we thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.